pretty scared of the teams that uh, we have in LCS right now. I'm excited to, to see how we'll do on LCS, and at the same time, it's my team, so it kind of motivates me to do as good as I can. And the new split will prove to be even harder, probably, with all these roster swaps. Uh, the whole element lo lost that is changed. We tried something new last split, and it didn't work out, so we just wanted to go back to work. what we knew worked. Now that we have forgiven in the team, he brings a really good bot lane, and that's what we always wanted. The best roster change was Fnatic for me. Now they have a Reckless and it will fit them insanely well. Coming back to Fnatic feels like coming home again. Championship Series coming to you live from our studios in Berlin, Germany. We are about to kick off week one of the LCS Summer Split. And as you can see, our fans are absolutely ready to get things started as they were a little while ago as well. Some unicorns of love fans that we've grown accustomed to and there. Fnatic with a reckless in their ranks looking to get their first win on the board here in their very first game, which is versus Unicorns of Love. All familiar faces in that team setting up for game one. I'm Efe Shogs of Borda, excited to be back at the Analyst Desk with Challenger Series shoutcaster James Stress O'Leary and two familiar faces returning to the LCS stage, Origen Expeke and Soaz. Welcome back, gentlemen. Thank you. Hello. Thank wow. you. <laughs> well, the fans are also very happy uh, to have you guys back. But the summer split begins today, and in 12 weeks, we will know the three European teams at World 2015. So let's go over the ways you can qualify for that World Championship. First off is, of course, getting the highest number of championship points over the season. And these are the spring standings showing where our teams are at right now. Yeah, so speaking of teams and where they're at, Fnatic right now are at the top of the table. 90 points already in the bank towards their world's qualification. And they earned those 90 points in the finals in Madrid against Unicorns of Love. And man, was that an exciting series to get all the way to five games. One of the best series we've had as a finals here in Europe. Uh, following them, in third place, it's going to be HUK, though they've bagged themselves 50 points, they took third after beating SK in Madrid. Uh, and then at the bottom side of the current table, we've got the Copenhagen Wolves and Gambit each with 10 points. Yeah, that's how it stands right now. Of course, there's another round of championship points up for grabs this summer as well. And then the two remaining spots for the World Championship from Europe go to the winner of the summer split or whoever comes out victorious out of the regional qualifier. That, of course, begs the question to the two gentlemen over here. How do you get guys plan to get to Worlds? So as um, World is not really a... Uh, it's a goal for us, but... We wanted to we want to do a good season first, and then see uh, where, whether if we can go to Worlds or not. It's gonna be really difficult, but we hope that we can make it. All right, okay. Well, the aim is that one pretty much to during the regular league. I don't think we have a high goal of ending first, second, third. The aim is to go, get to playoffs and then give everything we can to win playoffs. So obviously. It's going to be super hard, probably almost impossible, but if we made it, that, that would be the goal once we're there. Yeah, to impossible give is nothing <laughs> if you uh, dominate the Challenger series. But before we move on, we have to touch on the mid-season Invitational, of course, as well in the off-season. LPL's Edward Gaming came out victorious after beating out SKT, but for me and for a lot of people in Europe, Fnatic's performance was really hopeful going into the rest of the season. Yeah, it was very inspiring, actually, for Europe as a region as a whole. Uh, we had a European team take a Korean team, a top Korean team, to five games. Again, Fnatic was super aggressive all throughout the tournament as soon as we got into the, the playoff stage. Uh, very in your face, very aggressive. It was exactly what they needed to do at MSI to uh, bag themselves a great spot. Yeah, and uh, you know, give us some bragging rights towards the other regions as well. Now, if you want to take another look at any of the action from MSI or the Spring Split, head over to lolesports.com. And while you're there, you can check out the new lineups across the LCS and scout out your fantasy LCS team for summer as well. And now, let's turn to today's slate of games where we'll start with a rematch of the Spring Split finals between the Unicorns of Love and Fnatic. Then Origen will make his LCS debut against Giants. The Copenhagen Wolves will face SK Gaming and will end the day as H2K takes on Rocket. So, there you have it, guys. Your uh, very first LCS. LCS game, although you guys have seen a few, is versus Giants. What are your expectations going into that match? Okay. Uh, it's, it's hard to tell because even though from screens we could say whatever we think because we think we'll do good or whatever, we have never played them on LCS. None of the actual teams right now. And it's so weird because sometimes we practice a team and then we see them play on LCS and they play so different. Sometimes they play worse, sometimes they play better on the screens than they do. So it's like we cannot just get a bit too cocky and say, okay, we do good or we do bad against this team. Against this team. We have to see and just take care. And, more than aim for the win, aim to not make mistakes, to play a safe game and not fall into the, like a lot of things do on LCS against Unicorns a lot. Don't follow their game, follow their own game, don't play their way. And I think it's a super interesting matchup just for multiple reasons. I don't know whether all of our viewers will understand just how big a matchup this is in the region. When we were in Madrid, uh, there was Origin merchandise and there was Giants merchandise. Everywhere. Everybody had a piece of one of the two teams. So this is massive. Uh, how much added pressure, if any, does that put on you guys so as? Um, it doesn't put so much pressure. I think it's mostly about uh, Mithy and uh, Peke because it's, it's a Spanish team and they are two Spanish players. So I think it, this game is mostly going to be about build and matchup against Mithy and Peke and it's going to determine all the game is going to go. 
Uh, we'll don't worry, they will flame you too. <laughs> <laughs> so. I bet you've missed that so much. <laughs> anyway, I know this flaming. Yeah. Taking another step back, maybe looking at the league, and you guys have gotten to sit back and look at the entire spring split and all the teams. So, as what has been your impression of the strength of the teams and being able, as you say, to get a good season and make it to playoffs? How feasible that is? Um, I think we can do it. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know really what to say, honestly. Mm -hmm. We just need to wait and see. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to see because, for example, this season compared to last one, we have a lot less matches in uh, LCS. So we have, we're going to be, we're going to have to be more prepared for d doing our scrims, uh, doing our pre-matches and, and things like this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're going to have to, to see during the season anyways. All right, well, we will see indeed. I do have one final question. We need to get this out of the way. Origen, origin. We all say it differently. Peke, tell us what to say. Well, both words are fine. Okay. Origen is how you say it in Spanish. So. You actually say like if you were a Spanish person, mm -hmm. but origin is how you would say it if you were not a Spanish but speaker. You say it exactly the same twice now. Origen, origen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so See? that's it then. That's it then. And anyway, uh, well, good luck in that matchup as well. But for us, before we kick it over to the casters for our first game of the day, we want to know what you think of the competition heading into the summer of 2015. So tweet at LL Esports and let us know who is your player to watch and why. A couple of my players to watch are right here on the desk. Stress, who you keep an eye on? Well, it's funny because my player to watch coming from the Challenger series is their teammate Niels. He has never been on the LCS stage. He put up a great show showing with you guys in Challenger. I'm excited to see how we can compete against the likes of Reckless and Forgiven. All right, then for you guys, is there anyone you're sp specifically looking out for that you haven't played before, that you have played before? Well, um, for me, I'm mostly looking uh, for Fnatic with, the, with Reckless coming back to the team. I think it's a really great addition to, for them. And yeah, I'm looking forward to, to play them because I, I think it's the strongest team right now. So yeah, I would like to, to play against them in LCS and, and see how we can do. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, the same a bit. I was surprised when Reckless went back to the team, which makes it a, a lot more hype to play them again because it's, it's going to be more fun. They are super good and beating them will like be so so good feeling for us. <laughs> and even though not beating them, it will be a really, uh, a really nice to play against them and see. Especially something funny is to play against someone that you played with because it's, it feels so different when you play with people and then you play against them. You see stuff that they do that you didn't realize or that they didn't do. so. It's, it's good to get a different point of view when you play against all teammates. Yeah, definitely going to be a hype matchup. Remember to send your responses in at LL Esports and include that hashtag LCS so we can talk over some of your answers later today. And now it's time to send it over to the desk for our first game of the split where the Unicorns of Love have a grudge to settle against the Spring Split Champions. Crippo so handsome. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> and as Pick has said, Crippo is so hot. My name's Quickshot. That's the Fisher, which under the newest member of the LCS Hotest member. team. And Peke approved hottest member. Yeah, you know what feeling too. Like, this is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so. Guys, Summer Split is about to start, and it's going to be a rematch between the two spring finalists, Fnatic and the Unicorns of Love. We've been super fortunate in the Summer Split to have a couple of new guys join the team, including Crepo. We've had Spellsy joining to help us out on the stats side. And when we were looking at the teams to prepare for the split, yeah. one of the things we noticed is all of the early game aggression and just how impactful those kills and deaths were. So we've got some stats and some numbers prepared for you. And Deficio, why don't you kick us off? Well, so first of all, we looked at the first 15 minutes. You just look at the early game here for all the teams doing the regular split. So the first 18 games, we have the graphic now on screen. Notice here the first four teams, Fnatic, Unicorns of Love, Gambit, and H2K. Three of those ended in the top three last split in the European LCS. It really showed how you were awarded for playing very aggressive in the early game and getting these kills here. Yeah, if you look at the bottom of the graph, you see teams like Copenhagen Wolves, Rocket, MYM, Elements, you know, it, it pretty much tells the story of the entire standings, and that was really interesting. So we decided to dig a little deeper. Not only the kills, but it matters how many kills you give away. So if you can get to the next graphic, there we see the team kills and deaths from 0 to 15 minutes. It'll come right in a second. And then we can really see how that evolves for the teams. And this is where separations are made, right? We see Fnatic being so efficient. The kill disparity is pretty big there. Whereas UOL, you guys said it last year in the Springs with all the time. UOL, they play hyper aggressive, but they have no break. They have no pause. It's rolling a dice. It's rolling I mean, yeah, it's 50, 50, 50. 50. Literally 50 50 if you look at the stats right here. And uh, yeah, H2K, objective based gameplay. Yeah, it is the objective one way. It's more about the towers for them and taking more of the safe engages, maybe, so they're not giving away as many kills. But then you look at Giants because people might wonder why they're so far up to this when we are trying to say it's very good to get all these kills here. The problem for Giants is yes, they get a lot of kills early on but they give away even more to the other teams. So they simply make too many mistakes. And that's why they ended up as one of the bottom teams. Okay, so we've taken a look at the kills, we've taken a look at the deaths, but what does this actually equate to in terms of game control, in terms of gold, in terms of leads? I know we've sort of stepped away from kills and deaths and started to take a look at uh, the gold differences between teams. To fish out, cue us up there. Yeah, so once again, can just pull up the graphic we're in the first 15 minutes and we try and, and see how much gold do you earn and how much gold does the other team earn when you play against them. And the funny thing is we didn't even mention SK Gaming yet despite them being number one in the, in the last split. Forgiven style. Forgiven style. This is the 1-3-1, one, strong laning phase, push it in, get down these towers here, and just win due to farming way better and bully out the other team. It's not about the kill, so they give very little gold over to them, but so does H2K. Yeah, and you see in addition to that, Giants is giving away not even like kills and deaths, but they're, they're giving away more objectives too, and this shows that why they're getting so much more behind in these games, they lose a lot more gold. Yeah, and with Giants, we can say the same for Unicorns of Love, because we mentioned how they, they went even 50-50 in kills. 
they don't get the towers. And if you look at both Fnatic and Unicorns, it's almost like we just swapped it around. Yeah, and the one anomaly here that's not mentioned is Gambit and Shows. You know, they get more kills and deaths, they get anything gold, but somewhere along the line, it goes wrong with their shot calling. And let's see the season if they fix it. But going back to the point you made about UOL and Fnatic being pretty much mirrored, that's that's going to be an exciting matchup then today. It is, and it is the opening matchup for the summer split. So let's take a look at the starting lineups to remind you guys at home exactly who's playing for who. On the blue side in this first matchup, it is the ever unpredictable Unicorns of Love. Visit Chachi, Kickers, Power Beaver, Bardax, Hillisung, and Sheepy returning as the coach. And one thing that we did notice, Unicorns of Love went 2-0 against Fnatic in the regular split, lost eventually in the finals. But this is a team that shines in best of five yeah. because of that roll of the dice play style in some ways. It is, and it's the pick and ban phase as well if you are the Unicorn to love and you have these 50, 60 different champions per player almost at this point. <laughs> so when you try and prepare against them, it's so tough. Now for Fnatic, they had a few weeks after MSI. Obviously, they've been playing. They've had a lot of time to practice. But Unicorns, when they sit there, nobody watches what they're doing. I'm sure they're going to prepare so many different picks. So. And that's going to be tough for Fnatic now to figure out. I wonder if you're going to see another game of how low can the Nexus go? because it's always really exciting. But something that worries me is that I feel like UL may have hit their ceiling already. Whereas Fnatic, they added Reckless to their roster. They want to keep improving. They want to make sure that they not only were the, f the best team in Europe, they want to stay the best team and keep improving. And arguably with Reckless, they got a, got a better steal back, actually. Day one on the job, and you're already queuing up the rosters. That's my job. Let's take a look <laughs> at the Fnatic team roster who will be on the red side. And as Grefo mentioned already, it is, of course, Reckless of the AD carry, Huni top, Rain over jungle, Feather than mid. Support is the captain and coach, uh, or captain rather, Yellow Star with coach Daylor. How well is Reckless going to play? That's the question. He joined Fnatic once before. You can argue the results. He joined yeah. Fnatic again, and we've said multiple times, a better steelback. It is a better steelback, but it's also a player who takes or requires a lot more attention from his team. Reckless is not happy just being the, the janitor or the guy cleaning up. He wants to be one of the big carries. And again, we were looking at some of the farm here the teams get during the games. Reckless was number one on elements between 20 and 30 minutes. He got like 10% more than Froggen, the farming machine. <laughs> now he's on Fnatic, where it's about Huni, it's about Febivan. We have to see how they, they fit in here with this second or third carry, honestly, from, but, from Reckless. But he is a great player, and, and under Yellowstar, I'm sure they can adapt to find a playstyle. But if you look at the raw CS numbers in lane, comparing to Steelback, uh, Reckless had a better record both at 10 and 20 yeah. minutes. So looking at the laning phase, that 2v2 should be stronger for Fnatic, but they have to learn how to play with that, right? They just need to, need to make sure that Reckless goes out of the laning phase, joins the team for the mass skirmish-based style that Fnatic did a lot. And uh, let's see if that translates. I completely agree, because watching 2v2s from Fnatic at Spring was not a particularly beautiful no, thing. it was not. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in picks and bans for Game 1 in Summit. It is patch 5.9. Every champion is enabled, and let's see what direction you're going to go. So if you haven't been watching League Legends much the last few weeks, something real quick you have to know. There's a, a couple of picks strong in every role. Azir Cassiopeia in the mid lane is a pair, so we see the Cassiopeia ban right now. Yeah. It's likely that Azir would either be first picked or banned by one of the teams. And then there's a jungle too, Deficio. The jungle is obviously Rek'Sai, Gragas, and the and the Sidwani as like the three best ones, but none of them has been banned. They were instead Fnatic. This is what they did in the spring the finals. It was Cassiopeia, Morgana, and Annie. That was the three bans in all five games against Unicorns and Love. And then they tried to bait them into first picking Thresh for Hillisang, so they could take two of these strong picks. But obviously, on purple side, if you can get two of the really contested picks, a lot of teams would say that's the better side to be on, but we need to see how Fnatic can and will use it. And then the, ch the, the crowd's done it for us, you know, who need, who need, who need. He's <laughs> definitely targeted here with two bans here, with Rumble and Hecarim. But Unicorns of Love, they, they opt to uh, ban out the, the uh, Azir, opting for for maybe a better first pick for them. I'm not, I'm not sure if I like that. All maybe things are open. open. We have to keep in mind that during MSI, a lot of teams were banning Azir against Febivan as well because yep. he'd been performing so well in scrims. And this is more so because of the Cassiopeia ban. They don't want to have to first pick Azir and don't want to risk Fnatic taking them in early rotation. But Callista was left open. And this is a bit of a different style for Unicorn to love. It's not been about Vardax as a main carry. Now he's on a champion where he has to win in his lane and be a bully to snowball. I like this pick because Kalista traditionally does very well to Sivir. And Fnatic is a team that plays with utility AD carry and then focuses on the soul lanes a lot more. But Kalista does so well against it that Reckless might be forced to pick Urgot here. Well, we'll see whether or not Reckless does. That's the first time Vardax has played Kalista all year long, including the playoff games and the regular season. Yeah, and for Fnatic... Hard, I mean, so there are two support bands already. Okay, so Bard is enabled. Bard is enabled. Is new Ash as well. New Ash is up there. Five point nine to that. I, I, I love yeah, new ones. I think Deficio knows Bard very well. Yeah, I think so too. Actually, <laughs> I've gone to the Crypto Bard school and I've tried to learn no, as much let's as possible. Let's wait until we see the Bard. Yeah. Actually, we All see Dragon right. here. Uh, <laughs> we, we mentioned how there were three junglers right now. We've seen almost every single game either banned or picked. In this case, the Gragas is not really surprised. Ooh. I like this pick up here hey, with the Ash. I, like I think Ash actually does pretty well to kill us. She has a very, very good laning phase, and to me, the new rework Ash here is one of the most rewarding AD carries if you have good positioning and you know how to really time her abilities. Rickles is known for that. UL's bot lane got a lot of kills though in, in, in the previous splits. When they had Morgana Thresh. If they can close the gap on the Ash, like if she starts falling behind, she can go from 0-1 to 0-2 and 0-3 really quickly. However, Yellowstar and Reckless are pretty good at playing safe and calculated in their lane, so we might not see that. And I want to see if Nautilus is going to be the support pick then from Hillisang in here, so you can basically target the CC on the Ash and you know you're going to get a chance to lock her up. Or, of course, Annie can do the same with the Tippers. So I really like the response here for Unicorns of Love. They say, we know you have an immobile AD carry. Double hard engage. Double hard engage instantly. Our AD carry as well can stay behind on his own and he can dance around and 
basically be safe. Yeah, you pretty much play yo-yo with Annie, you know, you see goes in, she flashes and Tibbers, and then you pull her back out with the ulti, throw her back in for an extra knockout, maybe she charges up another stun, and then her job's done and she can die. So we have to look at what Fnatic can build outside of the jungle AD carry, because what Ash does as an AD carry, she enables hard engage, which means you can now take a top laner, had maybe Kessie here been open and it would have been okay, because you don't need hard engage on that, on that role. We've seen Nautilus from uh, Yellow Star quite a few times as well, so I feel like there are some good options for Fnatic, and Ash just opens up so many doors in the way you can build. When you see Kalista, you pretty much want to go double tank, though at one point Kalista can't tear through those tanks as easily, and that's going to make it hard, like, easier for Fnatic to win his games. So we see Nar pick up, and then the Alistar. I like Alistar as a counter engage, because even if he gets CC, he can pop his ulti immediately and go for a combo. It, Unicorns might be telegraphing a possible Sejuani pick here, right? As Alistar is really good into that, so this is pseudo prediction, good safe pick, although the lane's going to be a little wonky, so you might actually see a swap. Fnatic, though, is really building a comp that can protect an AD carry. As long as the flash tippers from the Annie doesn't land in the face of Reckless, this frontline here provides so much build. Like, Gragas is one of these junglers who has so many different roles he can fulfill. He can be the guy to start the fight, he can be aggressive early game, and he can peel for an AD carry. So that's very effective for Fnatic in terms of the overall team fight. We have seen quite a lot of Evelyn, which also could be a jungle pick if you want to have the flank coming in. This one would purely be to buff up the AD carry, though. Well, I just want to mention, on the side of Fnatic, there's not a whole lot of damage in the early to mid game just yet. On the side of Unicorns of Love, they've got a few seconds before they decide, and they are going to be running that Cogmore middle. In Power of Evil's running in the spring split, it was AP, yeah. and he tried to play as safe as he could until level 11. Seems a little weird. Just poke mid laner with his, like, hybrid, you know, all in comp on the rest of the members, not sure. I, I'm surprised we didn't see much Victor here. As far as I know, he is enabled, and he could have been, like, a meta pick, because he was played a lot back in the day. Yeah, so... Come out. Victor is basically seen almost at the level of Azir and Cassiopeia, especially in terms of his late game damage. Also, he has a very safe laning phase. It could have been a blind pick, but this is a comfort pick for Power of Evil. We have seen it time and time again. Clearly, he's not afraid of taking it without seeing what uh, we can get in from uh, from Febivan. His set has been nerfed here, so that's one of the counters that was good against this pick, which is now slightly worse, at least, in that sense. But Fnatic, they're going to rely a lot on this uh, engage from Reckless and then follow up, because they got like three champions that can follow up really, really well. Now you're in four with the LeBlanc on that arrow. I like the LeBlanc pick. I think it punishes uni Unicorns of level in, in many ways if picks can be made. You know, it can shut the Kog'Maw down, you can even snipe the Annie if she gets behind. I think UL is a tiny bit all over the place with the comp. I'm yes. not sure if I like the Kog'Maw no. with, with the rest of the, the style that we're going for with the four other picks. I really agree on that one. It's it's a mix of like, we need some sort of hard engage, but also we want peel. That's just not not enough really to stop Fnatic in my opinion from trying to pile on to the back line here. Yes, okay, there's Ghost Flash in your mid laner, but it was kind of like uni Unicorns of love changed after they saw Alistar and Nar and just like swapped it around and said, okay, we go for, for Pope wow. now. We we'll, of... we'll have to find out how that works out gentlemen, because Pixel Bands are locked in. It is time to settle the score between the Unicorns of Love and Fnatic. And Fnatic have an uncontested Nexus, and they will finally win the Spring Split! I won revenge. Uh, after we played final with them, I really think that they're a really strong team. They're, the games against Unicorns are very like, chaotic, that they just fight for no reason. I want to play against them now with Reckless as AD carry. We have like new pocket picks and new strategies and whole different stories, so they can't prepare for us. Fnatic will try a sound as they can to win the game as well, so I can imagine just a bloodbath as always. A bloodbath as always from Power of Evil. Unicorns of Love and Fnatic are on the rift for game one of the 2015 Summer Split. Gentlemen, I did have to cut you off and pick some bands to hear from the teams, but let's pick it right back up. Yeah. That last pick for Febivin, LeBlanc, on his assassins in some favorable matchups. He 1v1 Faker a few times and really stepped up in the playoffs. Let's see how he does today against Power of Evil and the Unicorns of Love. And I think it's a really, really smart pickup. Especially because you look at the picks from Unicorns Love with the Nunu jungle as well. There's not going to be a whole lot of pressure on the lanes. And Nunu can't really contest these early wards here that Fnatic loves to use. We always see them very early on pink in the rivers so they can start roaming between the lanes. When you have Gragas and LeBlanc, it's one of the strongest 2v2s you can ever have. That should be full control of Fnatic. Then go down and gank this Kalista any lane. That's so annoying to deal with if it is a 2v2. So in, in reply to that Nunu pick, some person I want to watch is Reno. I want to see how he controls the early game of this game. I think it's going to be vital for Fnatic, but if they start snowballing, making those picks, we said in the introduction, Fnatic, they make a a lot of kills in a 0 50 mark, and it might happen again. I wonder if Rainover is actually going to go for a, an early side clear, two or three camps, and go for a cheeky level two gank on mid. Definitely seen Rainover being very active in the early game before, and he had a great showing at MSI. Notice what Fnatic did just before. Febivan jumped over the wall of the dragon, placed the ward on red, so he's going to spot kick his and see where he starts once he either goes for red. If he does that, that's what you often see if someone wants to go for very, very early play where you can get red buff. Take one cam and to get the blue buff, and you have double buff before the 320 minute mark. Now, this gives a lot of information. Both buffs are warded, as far as I know. And then this basically can let Fnatic deduce what uh, UOL is doing behind, uh, behind the scenes, right, in the dark. They actually prediction swap from UOL, but not matched by Fnatic. Fnatic is just going to do the Gromp here. Uh, Ash Alistair pretty slow on doing that. No, no W taken either to move the Gromp closer to the lane. They expected a 2v2, and they were willing to take it. But Helix Tank sees that it's a lane swap. He's going to take full XP here, hit level 2, and he might go straight mid. 
Fnatic does a vision of it, so the whole surprise is kind of gone for Unicorns. We have seen this strategy quite a few times in the EULs. It's already pinged him. Reign of the jungle. Yeah, yeah. Two guys, yeah, he's just going in to see what he can find. No gank should be able to happen because Fnatic has been able to follow him since the Gromp. Well, we'll find out what Hillisung and the rest of Unicorns can do as we do see that lane swap coming in. Let's touch on that Reckless Ash as it is the first time we've seen that reworked Ash in the LCS. Yeah, rework Ash. We're not going to see too much. Like, she's in the lane swap. There's nobody. She kills those creeps. Though, she will destroy <laughs> these creeps here. But uh, notice how both junglers, they were starting on the weak side of where the dual lane was going. We had the Nuna take rip off on his own and we had Gragas Nar take their own rip off on top side. So now they just swap down. Both teams are basically sending four guys down towards the bottom lane. Let's see if there's an early dragon for Fnatic. That's very hard to do now with the new buff dragon. The way this went down though makes the game pretty predictable because there are no freezes, right? Both lanes are slowly pushing into the towers. Basically, both teams are working with a lot of information. And I think this, this favors Fnatic in a sense so far because they get their rough bottom lane through the lane, even though I don't know if they counter mind games uh, UOL or if they're just very, very confident in their lane ability. Reminds me of the old 4VOs that we saw towards the end of last year. You do see UOL a little later to joining that top lane party, but you have a whole lot of minions to work with. It looks like Fnatic will secure the first objective of the game in this bottom lane tower. Now let's see if Fnatic wants to bounce the wave here or if they want to push it very hard in and try and go for a tier 2 tower in they case Unicorn it. stays on the top side. You can see how they're now just waiting for the tower to clear out as many minions as possible. They may have overpushed, though. Have, this tower is going to die and there's going to be loads of minions left to push it down to the tier 2. So there will be some farm to be picked up. Uh, oh, no, minions don't. There we go. I think, I think it'll push back and then yeah, Huni will fine. stay here, so that's good. Um, you could have extended this a little longer because Ash is a BF sort AD carry. Uh, list, depending on the build she goes, you could put a long laning phase. But Fnatic is deciding the tempo, right? They take the tower and the dragon, and you well can't trade with an extra objective. They just get that one tower, so Fnatic take the lead here. I definitely like this play, and I don't even think you care too much about the fact you want to get a pickaxe because Kalista, in order for it to be a really lane dominant, she also wants that BF soldier. Yeah, if you just true. speed it up for both of you, so instead now, have to just go for some lifesteal and now pickaxe for Rick. So he's gonna have some good early trades. Like, the thing about the new Ash here is she can basically do two things. You can do the very quick trade with auto attack volley and you just back away and you should have won that trade. Or if you stack up your focus, you can activate that Q and then you have a few seconds where you're gonna be stronger. Fnatic being really smart here, they know they've taken a, the tier one tower on bot lane, they've taken a dragon. There is no reason for Ash and Alistair to be on the bottom side of the map. It is very likely that Vardax and Hillsang are gonna swap back to bottom. Keep dodging them, you know, let Huni range farm against them. They're not gonna take the tower too quick. They're not gonna kill Huni because Huni is pretty good at, you know, dodging these deaths. And then they're just gonna go for another tower. And Fnatic is just scaling that Ash upwards and upwards until they get comfortable levels, until Alistair hits level six and can start roaming and tower diving. I wanna see how Fnatic handle themselves once they do get reckless to level six. Because they do have a combination of champions that fits their playstyle, finding those kills. But this level of coordinated defensive play almost is quite uncharacteristic from Fnatic. We've seen it from UOL when they run their range poke mids. Reaction from Fnatic here, bot lane's frozen uh, by Vardak, so they send more members up for a cross map objective in the top lane. We can see both teams are reading the exact same thing here. Unicorns knows by freezing the bottom lane, they have to send guys up and defending the top tower before Fnatic even moved in position. So we got four guys well, that versus three. Everyone is against each other. Let's see if Fnatic want to try and go for any of these aggressive plays, Trevor. They want to go for the Annie here. See if they can focus him down, gentlemen. 4v3, Fnatic are looking. They want it. That's a two-man stun from Hillesang. It's going to dissuade the aggression as the minions have been killed out. You see the Yeti going onto the horns of Yellow Stars. Alistair, he's been caught out. That's a two-man pulverize. The rest of you are well peeling away. Now it's Hillesang that's in trouble. The barrel and the volley slows him down. He connects with the boomerang, but nobody's caught just yet, and everybody gets out alive. I really like them. The Fnatic playing with their number advantage. Yellow Star held on to his flash, actually, because he knew backup was coming. Huni, however, a little over-eager, had to blow his flash. Oh, that is a level three knot that needs to back away. 15 CS versus the level 4 Trachy, and we did see Power of Evil's Roam forcing that summoner spell. If you look down the, the uh, CS numbers, even uh, as far as the opposite numbers are correct. So let's just see if you can get the advantage from all these shenanigans. Yeah, Unicorn staying and trying to defend. Here's the dive. Oh, they've got on Hillisang. That's the bounce on the hop. First blood goes to Reckless. He's back for Fnatic, and he's already on the board. Takes two turret shots before he's forced to peel away. Rain over Huni and Yellow Star. They want Kikis, they get Kikis. Busy Trachy is the next target before Rain over is forced to flash to safety. The volley, and that's two kills for Reckless. Fnatic 3 0 at the seven minutes. And I just love how they stay up here because they know they have the four guys. They have good poke as well from Reckless, and they're just waiting for one mistake from Unicorns of Love. Notice if we get a replay how Hillisang was standing a bit further behind the tower, behind his teammates, so Fnatic could jump him, get the tower and quickly step back out of it, and therefore juggle him really well, get that early kill early. Three kills even now. The Oi, play. Look at that power. People forced to flash. 110 HP. The Ignite's ticking. The Ignite's burning. The Ignite is not enough. And power has the evil to survive. And I just want to highlight, you know, we said it before, Fnatic is just more efficient. They read that phase beautifully, and UOL, look at look at the bottom lane right now. Kalista's doing nothing, and they chain that TC so beautiful. Knock into knock, multiple knockups. You see? And look at this from Yellowstar. Because Annie's so far behind the tower, he can go in, he can tank up two or three hits and safely step out before he ends up dropping too low, and therefore now these big tanks and everyone Fnatic just dancing in and out means they can keep diving. Notice how there was no tower again for about two seconds right there, and they waited for one of the tanks to pick it up and then juggle it again. Beautiful execution for Fnatic. They're playing with a new member, Reckless. He was involved in that tower dive, and already they're perfectly in sync. Fnatic is showing up today. And this right here as well, 
is uh, one of the reasons we, we don't very often see someone freezing lanes anymore. Because it simply opens up for the other team to make an, an active play, an aggressive play on the map with a numbers advantage. Vardax was just sitting stuck on his tier 2 tower. There's no reason for Fnatic to ever back away and go back to defend because he was just stuck there. And the worst part is once things start going wrong, Vardax wants to start pushing out his lane because he just built up a lot of gold. He wants to go shop. But at the same time, the mistakes already made, so Breakfast is coming from base with a BF pickaxe, you know. Now Vardax is getting zone up, is, can be zone off the wave that he froze earlier. Yeah, just very quick to take note. Rooney's picked himself up. That giant belt on his gnaw. Taps that we've seen some black cleaver builds in some of the other regions. So we'll see if he sticks to this full tank. But Reckless left alone in the top lane with all of that attack damage. And I visit Chachi to run down if he wants to. Just getting everything he wants at the moment, and so is Fnatic because Huni could go down and catch the big wave here. Callista obviously not really that great at instant pushing it out so early on. But you pick Callista, Annie, one of the strongest lanes in the game, and you don't adjust your game plan to at least get a 2v2, get an objective, get any type of skirmish. No, you sit there and freeze with, with the stronger early game carry, and you let your late game. Carry on the other side, beat the by his team. Very, very poor strategic strategy by you also, man. Yeah, and you definitely cannot disrespect the damage late game from an Ash after this rework here. The, the Q from her is insane in terms of what you can do as long as you time it correctly and you don't get forced out of the fight. I want to quickly talk about how Vivol and his items here. He was one of the first players to start bringing Loot and Zekko on nearly everything. He normally builds it on these long range poke champions as well, but he's adjusting because he's laying against February and Andre Blanc. He's going to go for the Athene's belt. It is less poke damage, but you're going to have some more mana regen and you're going to be a little bit more safe when you're sitting there and poking from range. That explained really well as a team. You know, they had a lane pushing out on top lane, they, but instead of, you know, furtherly pushing it out and not looting the farm, they recognize that Dragon's coming up, they send the Dragon's to the bottom. Huni is top lane with TP right now. You all started Dragon. Is Dragon going to contest that? The thing is, if they can manage to build up the rage bar for Huni once he gets to these minions here, he does have the TP ready. Fnatic is moving. Arrow is the arrow is very strong here alone, but this is Nunu Kalista. This dragon was like 2k HP, it's dying. Well, 10 minutes 40 on the clock. Take a look at the gold difference. Only 3,000 in favor of Fnatic. It is one dragon to one, two towers to one. So Fnatic, hold on to the objective lead as we're four minutes away from those graphs we looked at earlier. A much more controlled, yeah. aggressive play from this summer split. They're not giving Fnatic. away any deaths right here. Let's see what happens. Hillsang is walking in. Hillsang is going to spot him. Oh, the arrow. It flashed away. That was close. Felt like Reckless held onto that uh, Crystal Arrow just half a second too long. Yeah, but he wants to do it. He has to chain it perfectly because otherwise he has no time to follow up and then he'll will flash after the damage anyways. And he just wanted to like make sure the Arrow gets a kill or doesn't get it at all. Getting the flash burn from the main engage on Unicorn's Love is a big deal for Fnatic all game long. Because eventually she will get Tibbers. Not yet. She will get it soon, and then you know she's gonna flash Tibbers onto Reckless. If they keep doing this and try and force it away from Hillsang, it's a win for Fnatic despite not getting a kill, because it now means you can play more aggressive in your lanes as well. You don't have to be so afraid of this combo coming from Callista Annie soon. The one problem for Fnatic right now is if you're ahead, you know, two towers, you definitely want to get that third tower down in the mid lane. But you're playing against a Kog'Maw, which has so much rage there, so there's a tiny risk that they can get caught out rotating in the jungle, so they have to do it safely. But knowing Fnatic, they have a lot of wards, and they have the new Ash Hawkshot. Yeah. Two charges charge up. If they get caught, it'll be a big mistake. And here's what I would do if I'm Fnatic. I would wait for my Infinity Edge on my Ash here, because it's such a big deal for her, seeing as she's always crit uh, critting with her auto attacks, with the slow, the new modified crit here. So just getting Infinity Edge completed is a 30% damage increase just straight away, form right there. Get that completed, then you can walk mid, you can try and shoot Power View with the arrow here. If he gets hit or just get poked out, that tower is yours, and that's how you can slowly play it, and just wait for at least one item spike before you become too aggressive, because right now, they have fine control to just sit passively in the lane and just collect the farm. Well, we just see the fans at home and in the audience are in favor of Fnatic. 75% of hope for the Spring Split Champions. Yellowstar has to play back a little bit here, still level 5. He can get instant pop. Once he hits level 6, he can actually put the more what they call forward zone. He can walk up and create zone for Reckless in a way that if he gets hit, he immediately pops his ult into counter engage. And that way they can lane easier. But Fevermint is going up the way. Oh, let's see if he can find the kill. Ignite's available, but Fevermint decides not to follow up after using his full rotation. We're talking about the zone here. We can even say Fevermint is someone doing the same in the mid lane. Fnatic always plays this way here and it becomes even more impactful when you look at these pink walls we mentioned earlier in the game in this river here. So they take over the river vision, meaning whenever this Alistar or LeBlanc jumps forward, you think to yourself, there's a chance to jump close here. So I cannot go and trade back, I cannot go all in because I risk getting ganked then and you just have to always back away. That makes you lose the trades and you just slowly fall further and further behind them. Yeah, good tempo from, from Fnatic so far and also just like really good vision control. The one thing that speaks for uh, Unicorns right now, they have that cheeky little pink ward down uh, at the wolves. Sometimes they will see Raynover rotating without him knowing that, but they haven't found an open yet. Zero kills with Kalista and Lane, you know, Maokai, aggressive jungle back to you, and only one dragon. UL is, is behind the curve at the moment. And here's what UL is, is waiting for. They want level 11 on power people, and the one that Ludens Echo completed. That's where they always start moving. They're doing a little bit early here compared to normal, but it's a good rotation because the lanes, we had the Nar sitting top, and we had both Reckless and Yellowstar sitting bot lane. So it just got a bit of free tower, but you're waiting for level 11 on power people, then you start making plays. Yeah, power people did pick up some damage just a moment or two ago with that needlessly large rod. Still no, you know, complete ticket items with Vivivin. Morena Namikon as well as the Sword Shoes, Chilling Smite versus Challenging Smite in the jungle. 
Bristol. Sidestone picked up for kick. It's no surprise there, but really, Fnatic, they've got their lead, they've held onto it, and they've not made any risks that could be punished. I think this game will stay in a passive state. We're gradually uh, moving the warline up from Fnatic until the next dragon, and then we might see some action, but it's second dragon for both teams. It's on the Tyler shirt. They're moving the jungle, though. Oh, yeah, let's start. He does have that unbreakable. He decides to engage. That's a flash pulverized. He hit by Power of Evil into the of and right over. Knocks him right back in. There's no way for Power of Evil to get like away. I was wrong, Trevor. And that's another kill we both were crap because I wasn't expecting that. The yo yo gets pulled back, and Vodags throws him right back forward. Hennessy like, trying to find somebody from Fnatic to jump onto. And then he does have Megan off, level 9. Let's see if Fnatic can find anybody else. I'll be happy with the mid tower. Yeah, yeah break over that tower. That's so important. It is. It is. So we didn't get the vintage on Rekus before they did it, but they did decide to swap in mid. Feel like now is the time to do it. They're pushing out for another one. Look at the flank here. We have Maokai coming in and any down on the bottom. We'll have to see whether or not they can make an impact. Reckless has still got that crystal arrow available. Holds onto it for the time being. The unicorns only have like two forms of engage, you know, either Annie being thrown in by Kalista or just flash tippings and then Maokai, but they're so far behind and there's so much vision from Fnatic that they're, they're such a good team, you know, they, they won't get flanked that easily and it's looking really good for unicorns. And look at that last play. We've, just, we've seen two guys sitting in mid lane, pushing it down, suddenly Yellowstar walks in alone near the Raptor camp. It looks like he's getting caught out, but this is where Fnatic always does it so well because Reno was running from the other side of the tower already. Two guys were running down from mid lane, so instantly, as Unicorn showed themselves, it was a pop this ulti, headbought it, power people back. That was a kill, that was a mid and that's there. It looks risky, it looks very crazy, but they always seem to have a plan with it. But it's, it's like Daler said in one of his interviews, that's a coach for Fnatic. They make plays with high expected value, you know, they have a really good combo there. They kill somebody and they immediately take a tower. Earlier, Kalista was freezing the bot lane, Fnatic, they, they grouped up on top, they dove, CC chain, juggled the tower aggro beautifully and got the tower. Now they dove again, knock up into knock up, and they got the tower. Fnatic's playing calculated, they have a goal in mind every step they take. And they have a 5,000 gold lead to Makes play easier. with. This is, this is sort of the styles of the two compositions that we saw towards the end of the spring split, but Fnatic has just gone multiple levels better. The aggressive teams at MSI, outperform the passive teams at MSI. And it's Fnatic that are deciding the moves, deciding the sure. changes, and they are making UOL dance to Fnatic. But UOL wasn't aggressive. They have this passive farm poke mid which is fine for them, but they didn't use a Callista Annie at all. They didn't use a Maokai TP, no flanks. They're just, I think they're just not used to the LCS anymore. Week one, they're just starting to get into it. They had a little break. Hopefully, sure. they'll get fixed. But also, it just seemed like in champs to like, that they had this plan on the first three picks. You yeah. have a lot of hard engage coming in. We want to try and dive on to David Carey. And then you saw the big tanks. You just completely changed it. So with the Nunu pickup, in this case here to help the early game, he's not going to add any pressure. He's not going to help your 2v2 lane become even stronger or help your mid lane or sit and farm. Yeah, well, the one thing we do have to highlight, the outer ring of turrets with the lead is always the easiest of objectives to take down. Let's see if Fnatic can push onto these inner rings and if they can maintain that line of vision that has served them well till this point to avoid that hard engage from Hillisang with Flash from Hizachachi. However, POE has shown he's a fantastic Kog'Maw player, and if he gets a couple more items and starts poking people down and the right people down at the right time, Fnatic may not have won the game just yet. For sure, not yet. However, the comp they do run as well. I mean, I'm such a big fan of the new Ash. I think she's absolutely amazing in professional play because of all the things she can. What you do now is when you 1-3-1 as Fnatic, because you don't want to group 5 with all this wave clear from Unicorn's law for Power of Evil sitting, so you 1-3-1, you keep your Ash in the mid lane because she has this arrow she can fire to the side lane, and that's a way to set up an easy kill for someone like Febivan, or maybe Reyna was going down for a dive, and that's how you break open the defense of Unicorn's law, and you then get a tower, because if one guy dies, suddenly Unicorns have to move around all the pieces on the map to try and defend the tower, and that opens up somewhere else. Fnatic last bit was notorious for sneaking uh, these cheeky barons, you know, 20 minutes, 21, 22 minutes, even in Soul Queue, if you ever play against Yellowstar, you have to go that, because at one point, he'll rally his team behind him and just get that Baron, and then yeah, it gets messy. So I definitely hope the unicorns are ready for that. Because they need to keep stalling. You, know, you want to get Maokai to become this really, really big tank guy that can soak up damage. Meanwhile, while Kikis can buff power of evil, his W late game, AP Kogma still does a lot of damage on his W late game. Yeah, some of you've also got to highlight Luden's Echo has been completed by Power of Evil a little later than we used to see yeah. that tier. 575 out of 750 stacks. Obviously, the fiend's working wonders. So, Power of Evil is starting to hit some big spikes. He's also level 11 to boot. Yeah, some very important items for them. Righteous Glory for your marker in the top, and in case you want to make a catch. AD carry wise, you've got BT in the Callista. So, she's hitting the point in mid game as well, where she's super, super strong. We talked about his early hits, he's going in. That's a flash turbo. Reckless forced to flash away. He's down to 30% HP. We did see Hillisang being pulled backwards, but he's flung exactly perpendicular. The Unicorns of Love have got the damage onto Fnatic. This should open up the tower. And we talked about this year from Unicorns of Love, what they always do, these poke mid laners, they wait for the correct power spike and then they instantly group in the mid lane and they start pushing it down. This tower didn't get a kill sadly for them, but at least they got some gold. And that's important. And the Unicorns are matching the right lanes as well, you know. Maokai will not die to a block, you know. He's pretty tanky, pretty beefy. He can survive that. So this spot, Unicorns enough time for power to hit that spike. And then a beautiful flash engagement from Villasang. He does not have distortion boots yet. So that means the next flash is going to be like five minutes out. Wow, it looks like Febivan actually got that blue buff from the little altercation in the jungle. But I also think it's important to keep our eye on Reckless. No flash from that engage previously. Yeah. He cannot afford to be honestly anywhere near a Maokai or any of those threats from your life. That means there's going to be a, a side window where uh, Hillsang will have flash and Reckless will have knock because he has a support mastery for it. No distortion boots on either side. Let's see if they capitalize that in four minutes from now.
Fnatic stopped looking at the map at the moment at least. They were not respecting the move Unicorns can make. This bot lane has been built up really smart. over one or two minutes ago from Vardax at first, and then he went mid lane to take it, but instantly rotate down. They're against so strong on poke. Let's see what happens here. All five members on the way. And that's a hawk shot. Boom. Well, we do see Huni. Meganar is very close to popping. He hops over the wall. Righteous Boy is going to give some speed gap, but it's Fnatic are a little split up. Huni's about to go Meganar's power of evil. He shredded down the cow. Now there's one victim from Fnatic. That's a two, three men not against the wall. Huni tried to do what he can as Feverman has found power of evil. The sun lands up to hill his son, but it's not enough. Feverman has drop kick as Nunu and Chachi will be the next victim. Fnatic turn it around. They've got two kills. They're re engaged. Vardex has still a lot of HP and power of evil. Mana to play with. They end up trading a two for two as Unicorns of Luck were in four retreats. Meanwhile, BO is poking here. I really like it. It was like a multi layered play. You know, UL goes down on the bot lane. Fnatic reacts by trying to flank, but they split up. And in reaction to that, you saw them. You saw UL turn around and take the fight. And you were wondering why, because Power of Evil was coming from the mid lane. Blood boiled by Nunu, and they immediately took care of Yellow Star. Good reaction from Fnatic, though. The double knockoff into knockback into Magus Barrel was almost lethal. Just watch the arrow in this fight later. Yeah, and also Fnatic, we have to highlight they're missing so many key ultis and, and even flashes here for someone like Rekus. Look at Yellowstar, he's the first target because he had to use ulti beforehand. So Yunus does get the first. He drives on Yellowstar right now. He's gonna block the arrow for his mid laner in about five seconds, and this basically wins them the fight. Also, Huni on the Nar, getting three guys blocked in. Tigerman then with the damage, and Rekus joining now very late, but he has to be very careful in how close he gets to this Maokai. So keep backing in and out, and in the end, the teams will trade to kills the two Vardax. Oh, sorry, Hillisang got the very last one. And such a confident play from Hillisang. Any other support, they would have opted to basically get thrown out, but he goes back in knowing he has another stun ready, he has tippers ready, and that makes the trade 2 for 2 instead of a 2 for 1 for Fnatic, and it just shows UL is, is comfortable again on stage. The scary thing is UL are still about 4,000 gold down, and need to not give up more objectives, but you see Fire Beals securing blue in the race of Fnatic, rather than that. And that's really where we have to give so much credit to Unicorns of Love, how they're not afraid to pull the trigger once they felt they were strong yeah. enough to make that play in mid lane. Had Fnatic been able to, you know, expect it or predict it, they would have been five guys there already with a 5, 5k gold lead, forced to fight with the arrow, and just won it straight away. So I really like how Unicorns are just looking at where Fnatic is on the map and instantly reacting to try and get on some of these powers they need. We saw last split, teams would go passive once they were behind, but Unicorns, they went passive, but they charged up and they waited for the right time to strike, and then they got objectives and they, they stayed into the game, and that's really impressive because other teams would have just gotten snowballed on by Fnatic. And something we also have to highlight, 23 minutes in, is four Dragons been in this game, three of them by Fnatic, and actually very early on we had that graphic pop up. Unicorns of Love had two victories that led from five Dragon games during the spring split. Fnatic at zero. Fnatic's a team that's not traditionally put a huge yeah. emphasis on Dragon. So number one, it's growth, and number two, it's against Anunu. So great planning and strategic play out of this Fnatic squad. It's a bit of an EDG style from Fnatic, as, as we saw at MSI as well from them. It's it's more about getting this Baron here to close out the game, because Baron is really the big deal in this current meta. Also, when you're getting so much, you know, poke and, and AP damage from Unicorns will love to clear the waves. So once you have the Baron buff to buff up these minions here, Power People won't have that easy of a time, and you will get to at least set up either a dive or get some damage on Tower in every way. We're building up to the next siege or the next fight. Hillsang has flash, no flash on Power of Evil, though, and no flash on Vardex. So UL will have to be careful of flanks. You know, Alistair wants to come from one side, Gragas might be coming from the other side. But if they're careful and they get the right flash tables, they can win these fights. There's a big item uh, thresholds have been completed as it's 25 minutes on the clock. Vivivin's been on that dead cap in Morello for a while. Righteous, the rain of his hands, as well as the Randian's own. For Huni. A lot of tank stats and armor primarily being built up on the side of Unicorns of yeah. Love. And as Vardax, he's got his Hurricane, he's got a Bloodthirst, so there's a lot of sustain if he doesn't the first down. I remember Hurricane as well got a small buff here on this patch. It is, as like a second item, damage-wise, the strongest, but he's still gonna have that problem later on in game, where he doesn't have any crit to take down some of these tanks from Fnatic. We're gonna have to see if it's gonna be a problem for him. Also adds an Optus and makes a way clear. But if you look also at, at the big tanks, you highlighted the armor from Unicorns of Love. We can see a both teams. Tank-wise, are building to engage on each other. Right is Lori first item for Rainover, not going frozen hard or anything to stop some of the damage from Vardax, or the auto attack can come in for Power of Evil. That's going to be a key item for him later, if he wants to stack some armor that way. But for now, it's about engaging from Fnatic, it's about engaging from Unicorns of Love, and smack into each other. There's a lot of pressure on Power of Evil right now, because Fnatic is building to catch him up, Body Slam Flash, you know, double distortion from LeBlanc. They really want to get him, because if he falls, the entire, like, he's the crux of Unicorn's lineup right now. If he falls, it's over for them. But he's been playing really well so far, only one death. He's, he's scaling a lot, a lot of farm, 24 CS right now, at the 26 minute mark. That is a good number. It's a different build from what we've seen in the previous times with Rankogman. Early haunting guys. Get some of that magic pen. So um, we've seen, yeah, I mean, you're right. We've seen very many different builds yeah. from Power of Evil. I like this one. You need to get that Leandris for the extra poke damage because, again, for him, it's not even about killing people. It's about poking them low enough so they have to back away from a tower on objective. And that secures it for Unicorns of Love without maybe even fighting at all, which is definitely in their favor because we have this Nunu Kalista that can so easily take down Baron or Dragon if Fnatic is, is too far away or forced back in base. 
Basically, the game is in a pretty stagnant state right now. And what's going to happen is what's really important right now, and what you often don't see is the side lane control. Both these teams want to move the side lanes uh, to a point where they start pushing in their favor, and the other team has to send somebody to react. Yeah, meanwhile, they might run around in the jungle, snowball each other a couple times, but not much is going to happen. They want to force people down to the side lanes and then group and get a numbers advantage and force to engage that way. But it's a slow and steady process. We talked about this 10 minutes ago about how good Fnatic were looking. And all of a sudden, the game has stalled out to the point that Unicorns of Love are now the ones making some aggressive plays. Rainer has gone for the flash body side, but he's going to caught out. He's stunned. Kickers is trying to do the absolute zero for zone control, but it's Feverman that's on the back line. Both the distortion away. Now Rainer is down. The chance to Chris Crystal catches Chachi. The power of evil and Vardex. The carries are locked up against the wall. Feverman has got one more in the background as Kickers is down. Chachi's trying to zone away what he can, but that tree's not going to last long enough. Vardex trying to lifesteal off the scuffle crab as he tries to dance and hop himself away. It's a two for one in favor of Fnatic, but can they get more? Feverman's looking for the chase. Dragons a minute and a half away. They're not going to risk running further. Unicorn's a little bit greedy here for the first kill on Rainover. Again, it's not about getting the kill, it's about forcing them out of the fight and back into their own base so you take down their towers instead. Here they were chasing for that one kill, meant suddenly they were in pretty risky positions and then got jumped on. We're just gonna see the start. Rainover flashing and missing it, but then look how Unicorns are gonna try and finish up the kill on him. Look Watch at the, the arrow, carry the arrow could have ideally went more to the right. Instead of on the main tank, we should have tried to hit one of the two carries really good gnarled. Yeah, second time. Second Last time. fight down near the dragon. It was the same deal for Huni with the Gnarl. He's really good set. This was one of his problems in the spring split. We never really saw him do well on Anar and Maokai. He's showing off today. I want to highlight that Rainov didn't miss his flash. Vardex flashed out of the body slam flash. He predicted True. that the flash was going to happen. He respected Rainover enough. You know, if I see a body slam, that's going to be coupled by a flash to carry over that knockup, you know, with the flash all the way. Vardex predicted it, got out, but he got sniped by Feverven in the back. Two for one, though, you will. They're getting out of these fights. If Vardex is, is, is getting a little impatient there, you know, they have to do these, these body slam flash engages or get a nice flank off, but it's not working. UL's respecting them a lot. I think a big problem for Fnatic was just they had this whole plan of we do the 1 3 1 now and we try and play around where Power of Evil is so we don't have to push the lane he's sitting in the wave clear and we impact the side lanes with Gnar and LeBlanc. That completely stopped when Unicorns made that move and got the mid tower grouped up as five because whenever we have these big five on fives, we see how close it is and if Unicorns get enough time, they will land the poke they need to be in a very, very good position. And that's a problem for Fnatic. This is interesting. They sent, they sent Kogma all the way to the bot lane and once he got there, he realized that he actually had a mid. I think this is a mistake by UOL. See what happens mid, they're going on Kickers. We will find out, Rainover does find Kickers, and Kickers is obliterated by Febivin. We do see Tibbs is knocked all the way back as Vardex has pulled Hillisang in. Hillisang unable to knock up more. Rainover is stuck on the side, he's out to his fight. He's trying to get further in. Power of Evil, as you said, on the Tribus right-hand side. We do see him throwing out that Void Use, but it's simply not enough. And Fnatic find another engage as we're about to hit 13 minutes. They're back in control. And I want to see the gold, because I think Power of Evil was close to an item spike, and he wanted to pick up that fat bubble wave all the way for that juicy farm. But once he got there, he realized his team was exposed in the mid lane. Baron was a threat, and yeah, he was probably close to finishing. Archangel staff there, and I think that cost UL a lot. They lost the tempo, he tried to join the fight, but he couldn't in time. And Fnatic, nice control. He's still poking away, and they're stuck near the Baron here from Fnatic's side. A lot of damage from Unicorns. Well, let's see what they can do. Unicorns are able to interrupt the Baron. Really sort of not even fully committed to interrupting it. So let's quickly take stock, guys. Three towers to three, ten kills to three. And it's nearly 7,000 gold. There. Fnatic have got the key ingredient that Deficio, you said, was going to crack open Unicorn's base. Baron, and then also the wave already pushing. Unicorns didn't go down to try and play it. They went mid lane and try and maybe take a dragon instead. They want the constellation dragon to at least avoid that fifth dragon coming out from the base. The base is going to open anyway. Well, wow, Chachi's down. Power of Evil is caught out. The barrel's going to knock them away. Mr. Fnatic get a couple auto attacks onto the tower, but it's not enough. Reckless is going to sidestep at least one of those living artilleries, but they do get themselves another kill at the cost of losing fifth. And the dragon, of course. So they did end up making a good decision and taking Power of Evil down to defend Follow the Kalista could take the Dragon. I think it was a right choice. Yeah, I think, I mean, so they lost one tower here. Fnatic decided to chase for the kill instead of the tower. So we, we don't know what could have happened. Had to just play it more relaxed and took the big wave to get some damage because Ash as well. With her Q, once you have the five stack, can really do a lot of tower damage. But for now, Dragon for Unicorns, Baron for Fnatic. Though. We're about 11, 10 to 11 minutes away from a potential fifth Dragon for Fnatic, so UL just bought them some more time in the game. Obviously, they're behind, but they're, they're a smart team, you know. They've learned from their mistake now. They need to keep Kog'Maw central because he's vital to their wave clear. Kog'Maw can clear waves in uneven numbers. One against two, two against three. He can get those waves cleared without being in danger. Yeah, and the thing is for Unicorns, they've been able to stall because of the fact Fnatic has needed to play for the Baron. So that extra couple of minutes may be enough for Unicorns. And the second power of evil stepped away and wasn't there to try and land some of this poke and clear the wave. That's where Fnatic, and that's why they built something like Righteous Lori is the first item on Rainover to Punish of Arrow and the Gragas going in. That's how you force the fight instantly. Botland towers with the two sidelines here. Unicorns have not been able to s control the waves and th therefore allowed Fnatic now two towers with the Baron. And, and this is why I like going for the Dragon right after Baron is down because you're going to lose your outer towers anyways. It's a matter of time. You know, either you lose them immediately or you lose them a little later. Those Baron creeps, they're too strong to defend and it's such a vulnerable position. In your base, you're safe because you have safety behind walls. But defending those tier two towers, it's too much flank opportunity for Fnatic. UL has to back off anyways. But they, they bought them some time. You know, two dragons against three. Thanks, you for the last tower in here. I will see that Baron 
is slowly wearing off. Fnatic are split. Four members in the mid lane. We do see Febivin hanging out towards the bottom lane. All of the outer turrets are down. Fnatic in absolute control of the map. Now they can see what further pressure they can apply on UOL's guys. We just need a one big fight that led to the Baron for Fnatic. Obviously had a few times where they tried the engages now. 10k goal lead once again. Let's look at some of the items completed for them. Really big pickup here on Reckless. The QSS Quicksilver Sash picked up. He can basically cleanse out of the Anistun, and the only thing that can take him down now is, is the snare to knock up from Maokai, but he can flash that or poke from Power of Evil. And this means a lot. This means Fnatic puts less resources on peeling because Reckless can take care of himself and more, move more resources forward, forward to diving. And that's going to be really important because they want to shut POE down. That's something we have to highlight. If you look at Reckless' CS at this stage in the game, in contrast to Huni, this is a slight shift in Fnatic playstyle. You touched on the CS difference and the CS priority from Fnatic in the spring split. It's a good one. Game one, it's instantly yeah, reversed. But it's also Huni not playing a carry top lane. He's on the tank this time around here, so they are basically saying, we rely on Rickers and Fitman to be the main damage dealers in this game. So obviously they need that extra farm, and as long as they can stay safe, or at least Rickers can stay safe, Fnatic have great damage from here on and out. Yeah, versatility in playstyle is what you need once you move towards the world stage. You know, Fnatic, they could play linear playstyle in the, in the season in Europe, that was fine, but if they want to do well at Worlds, it's going to be nice to see if they can play around Uni one game around Reckless. We'll have to see whether, whether Reckless can do well with less farm and Uni with more in this team environment, but it's nice to see that they can shake things up so far, at least. It's so exciting that we have these questions now moving forward and seeing how Fnatic can develop and grow, because Yellowstar said it in the opening weeks of Spring Split, just give us time. We only have one playstyle, but we can learn, we can adapt. And they're one of the teams that show that UOL also, in some ways, they went from just sort of like team fight, team comms to yeah. Poking mids, which is also great, but it's not quite being executed as well today in summer. It is fun though, it's, it's two teams who, despite ending number one and number two in the EULs, yes, are very down to earth. They're always talking about how we know we have a lot of things to work on, we know we need to, to fix a lot of problems, and it's really cool to see how they can adapt now during the split. Fnatic already coming off to a great start, but Unicorns are definitely not giving up. I actually like putting Ash in the top lane here because they have the three tanks in the mid lane in the 1 3 1. Your mid lane is prone to get, getting good on, but three tanks there makes them really good. Oh, they're engaging. Well, sidestep from the Ash. Yellow Star gets in, he manages to get a big knock up. We'll see whether or not that Maokai is enough frontline. Now, Fever joined the fight. In a second, the flash board fell off. But the massive Nora against the wall. Fnatic have just won the team fight. Thanks to Hooney. Four members of Unicorns of Love are down, and Fnatic are pushing through. Hooney once again delivers for Fnatic. And this is actually all the QSS. I want to listen to the comms on here because I think UOL said, Hilsing said, guys, I got Reckless Flash Tippers. I got him, I got him. I got him. He immediately cleansed out, and this dragged the entire Unicorns of lineup forward, and they basically walked into Huni, smacked him into the wall. 20 second death time is Fnatic are going to set their sights on the Nexus. The only team that's been able to defend it a few times was Unicorns of Love, but it's not going to be enough this time round. Unicorns are down, Power of Evil's poking from the side, the Nexus is hammered away, and the Spring Split champions open up summer with the massive victory over the Unicorns of Love. Great performance from Fnatic, from the control and the timing on their engages. It's hard to fault Fnatic's decision making. They're playing against the Maokai and then Annie, so Flash Root, Flash Tabers, and they only gave away four kills. And that is really important. 15 to 4 for Fnatic here, and, and really good, you know, pacing, really good tempo, yeah. really good objective timing. Good League of Legends. And a whole new champion pool, I'm almost going to say, for, for Huni showing up on this Nar so well, because if you look at these fights, the coordination from Fnatic by sending in Raynover and Yellowstar first to buy time, they were always playing super patient with this Nar here. We saw in the last fight, you talked about how there's only pile forward for Reckless, and that's where the Flash ulti comes in for Huni that turns the entire fight around. I love the way to play with this frontline tank here, and also we got some of the questions answered in regards to Reckless and how much farm, how much attention he's going to get. They put him on a champion he could carry on, they gave him everything he needed and it worked out for them. Well, we saw some heavy, heavy looks there from Kickers on screen a moment ago. One of the guys who really shook things up in the spring split. Put himself on the Nunu this game. We talked about how he was going to have little to no impact yeah. in the laning phase. And for a guy like Kickers who has the ability to put the game on his back, you have to go back to the drawing board. You have to talk about the, 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 the team comp, the yeah. early game decision making. Crepper, you wanted the 2v2 from that Callista Annie, and it just... Even it's if you don't get the happen. 2v2, put the pressure so people have to react and, and match that strong Kalista at level 6, you know, or, or early levels even, you know, match somebody with it so you have even numbers and you can exploit that some champions are weaker in the early game. Fnatic really matched that weakness very, very well by putting more people around the top. And that top lane dive, it didn't come out of nowhere, right? It was calculated, really slow, nice and easy, and then a beautiful juggling there. Just one guy goes in, he goes down, Reckless starts tanking, he yeah. dashes out. And then the mo most important part on that dive, there was a two second window where there was no tower angle and yeah. they waited. They waited for their tank and to pick it up and, and then in and out. That's again. one of the, I think, the most uh, impressive control tower dives we've seen out of the European LCS. So often they're chaotic and messy and sloppy and nobody knows that the tower's got the aggro. But it was very clear Fnatic were very good in the communication yeah. and they knew exactly what was happening. And it just seemed like for Unicorns of Love, with the comp they had as well, they knew when they should start grouping, but not how to get there. So it seemed like the, the plan for them early game was very passive focused. They didn't really have any answers to what Fnatic were doing. I think they got surprised by the lane swap. Probably they did. 
But then once they hit the spike on power people, that's where we started seeing the unicorns love we know. But it was just a little bit too late. It became too hot because they were still behind in gold. That yeah, wasn't, wasn't enough for the unicorns of love. And I think for Fnatic, 75% of the people at home voted for them to win. I did not expect that level of performance. I did not expect because it was very tempered aggression. This is the one thing I was critical of Fnatic at the beginning of the split loss, but saying it's only one style, it's just in your face all the time. Somebody's going to figure out how to play against it. And that happened in the group stages at MSI. People figured it out, played against it. But then all of a sudden, the semifinals rock up and Fnatic shows up against SKT. This is like Fnatic in their play style, just one, one step slower choosing when to go aggressive. Same time, like the Unicorns, they stayed in that game pretty well. They were down 4,000 yeah. gold pretty yeah. early, but that gold difference stayed the same for, for a solid five to seven minutes, and they grouped well until that one unfortunate moment. I, I have to look at the replay later, see if it was a, an item spike that Power Evil was trying to hit, because Karma should not go down to the bottom with, with not enough vision around Baron, with that threat of the hard engage. And even though he can join a fight, he joined it at the right side. You know, yeah. He tried to get in that fight, you know, then it was around the corners, like, okay, I'll walk around. By the time he's around the wall, you know, fight's And you need to land the poke before the fight even starts. I mean, exactly. that's why you have this pick here, to land so much poke that you're strong enough to win the fights. I just felt like Power Evil's build this route never got into the gear it needed to at the time it needed to. Game. The early tier, the early Chalice, it just puts such a stall on his ability to poke and his ability to do But damage. that was the matchup though. Yeah. In the mid lane, I mean, you have to keep in mind, this was, this was a blind pick from Power of Evil. The blank was the last pick for Fnatic coming in, so he felt like he had to itemize this way to even get the farm needed to even, to get the Lunas Echo. So, well, unfortunate yeah. for Power of Evil and the Unicorns of Love. It was a bloodbath, but it was against his team. We're going to throw it over to the analyst.